A serial killer imprisons a young man in his home, who witnesses the suffering of his captor's multiple victims until he grows of age. Soon, the deranged man gives his prisoner a chance to be freed and follow in his footsteps or remain shackled inside the graveyard house forever. As they leave the house, Sarah Fittler secretly tells her husband Brad about their son's eagerness to have a puppy. On the ride, Sarah assures her son, Tim, he'll go to summer camp despite their tight savings. Brad drops his wife and son at the theaters to watch a movie. Then, he gives Sarah some money, insisting they take a cab home instead of a bus. The woman refuses to spend more money than needed but eventually gives in. Then, Brad bids goodbye to his son and teases how he's always listening in one ear and out the window. Soon after watching a scary movie, Sarah hails a cab home like what her husband told her to do. Shortly after, Sarah notices they're going the wrong way, but the driver remains silent. Suspicious, the worried woman tries to call her husband, but her phone doesn't have any service. As the cab takes a turn, Sarah demands to stop the vehicle, but the driver shuts the sliding window and locks the doors. Realizing the danger they're in, Sarah thrashes in her seat while comforting her confused son. When the car stops in a desolate field, the driver exits the vehicle, so Sarah advises her son to run when she says so. However, the man punches the frantic mother unconscious, rendering their plan useless. Moments later, the cab driver parks inside a garage while Sarah awakens in the back seat. The kidnapper, Bob, pulls the mother out of the cab, so she closes the door immediately to protect her son. Tim watches the man drag his mother inside the house, telling her son to cover his ears. However, Tim later hears his mother screaming, so he cries and wets himself in fright. Shortly after, Bob drags Tim into the house, where he sees his mother's blood on the floor. Then, the deranged man sits Tim on a bed, but the boy fights back and kicks him in the crotch as he cries for his mother. Bob doesn't punish him, but says he should learn to live without his mother, insinuating that Sarah's dead. Exhausted from crying, Tim awakens when Bob approaches him. The deranged man takes advantage of his unexpected prisoner, telling the boy to do his housework and only follow his orders for the remainder of his life. He instructs Tim to open the locks on the door upon hearing the buzzer within 10 seconds, signifying the kidnapper is returning with another victim. Moreover, Bob tells Tim to find missing people's articles in the newspaper every every night and collect them in a scrapbook. He warns Tim, whom he renamed Rabbit, that he'll get a beating if he fails his regulated tasks, saying the boy must learn to live with his kidnapper and the corpses buried next room. Two months later, the vicious man shows Rabbit the article about him and his mother's disappearance before leaving the house. Shortly after, the boy climbs the shelves to the attic, where he exits through the vent. Unfortunately, Bob watches him from outside since he expects the restless boy to attempt an escape. Nevertheless, Rabbit screams for help help despite the barren field surrounding the isolated house. Bob encourages him, letting his prisoner know that no one will hear him and come to his rescue. He calls him predictable as he throws rocks at the desperate boy. Then, Rabbit grabs a rock to retaliate, but surrenders immediately as he feels defeated. However, Bob motivates him to persevere and gives him a running start before chasing him. But when Rabbit climbs down the roof, the vicious man throws larger rocks at him until he hits him and falls unconscious. Due to his failed escape, Rabbit is now chained at his ankles while he continues cleaning after the murderer's mess. One day, Bob returns with another woman whom he defiles on his bed. The miserable man sobs over the victim's corpse while Rabbit listens from the door. Afterward, the shackled prisoner cleans the bloody bed while camera recorders witness his every move. Afterward, in a show of mercy, Bob gives Rabbit a chocolate bar while watching TV. Years later, an estranged father and son enter a much older Bob's taxi. The cab driver witnesses the father hitting his son triggering his own traumatic memories. When Bob parks in his garage after dropping off his passengers, he sobs and thrashes in his seat, frustrated by the flashbacks of his early years. A teenage rabbit notices the sullen mood of his master, so he hands him a beer. Burdened by his failed upbringing, Bob wonders if Rabbit had a good relationship with his father. The timid prisoner doesn't respond, so Bob decides to be a father figure and educate Rabbit to make him understand how people work and refers to them as human puzzles. Bob gives Rabbit a book about human anatomy, urging him to study so he may be freed from his shackles and follow the murderer's bidding. However, Rabbit refuses to kill people, making Bob burst in rage. To convince his prisoner there's no hope for him left, Bob shows Rabbit a recent picture of his father, who has remarried and moved on from his first family's disappearance. Despondent, the teenager declines Bob's beer but decides to study the books no matter his kidnapper's goal. As time passes, Bob quizzes his anxious prisoner about human anatomy, impatiently 
enhancing Rabbit's knowledge. One day, the vicious man struggles with a victim in his room while the chained prisoner covers his ears to block the sinister screams. Suddenly, Bob shouts in pain when the woman fights him back. The wounded victim hazily searches for a way out while Rabbit flinches when she begs him to help her escape. However, Bob has recovered and immediately ends the woman's life. Then, Rabbit stitches his master's wound from his fight with his latest victim, claiming he enjoyed the woman struggling. Soon, an intoxicated Bob wakes his prisoner and shuffles his victim's licenses like a deck of playing cards. The two exchange the dead woman's names, reciting the memorized details of their personal identification. Rabbit says he knows nothing about a woman's real weight like Bob, so the murderer assures he'll learn and experience it soon. While Rabbit cleans a victim's corpse, he rummages through her bag and keeps her cutter knife. Meanwhile, Bob thrashes and clenches his heart in bed, troubled by nightmares about his deranged father who beat his family and forced him to take advantage of his mother. Soon after, Bob brings home an intoxicated woman, who cheerfully introduces herself as Mary to the shackled man. Bob orders Rabbit to take Mary to the restroom, who is eager to relieve herself. Hesitant, Rabbit leads the woman to the restroom, but Bob tells him to take her into the other room, where he kills his victims. Mary thinks nothing of the dark concrete room, so she takes a smoke to satisfy her needs. Then, Bob takes the unassuming woman's hand and slits her throat, thus ending her life. Rabbit then identifies the severed blood vessel, putting his knowledge about human anatomy to the test. Afterward, Rabbit places the smoke pack with Mary's buried corpse, showing sympathy for the cheery woman. That night, the shackled man screams in his sleep, haunted by nightmares that keep Bob awake. The following day, Bob hands his prisoner a school yearbook, telling him to choose someone who is supposed to be their next victim. However, Rabbit drops the book, refusing to cooperate with his captor. Containing his rage, Bob claims his son should not grow up to be uselessly educated. Rabbit denies being the murderer's kid, so the vicious man grabs him by the hair to gaze at the home he's known, convincing him that they're family. Left with no choice, Rabbit picks up the yearbook and quietly retreats to his bed. Shortly, Bob removes his prisoner's shackles, bewildering the old-time prisoner. While watching the news about another woman's disappearance, Bob proudly claims the police don't have any evidence of the missing reports. He says they're listening in one ear and out the window, which Rabbit remembers how his father referred to him years ago. Rabbit hands his captor the full scrapbook of his victim's articles, so Bob says he'll get a new one. Suddenly, Rabbit asks his kidnapper about his reasons for committing the murders. Taken aback, Bob says the women compel him to kill them, but Rabbit disagrees. Then, the deranged man reveals his hatred for all women, hitting his head in frustration. Despite the intensifying anger of his captor, Rabbit differs once more, making Bob think his captive needs to experience a woman soon to straighten his senses. Sometime later, while Bob sleeps on his couch, Rabbit approaches and mocks him as he grows defiant of his captor by the day. Over breakfast, Bob forces his disobedient prisoner to choose who to kill among the women in the yearbook with a knife. Rabbit initially refuses, but the deranged man grows impatient, so he lands the blade on a random woman. That night, Bob roams the streets and abducts the student in his car. However, Rabbit hides beneath the table, surrounded by books, and refuses to cooperate. Patiently, Bob sits in front of his timid prisoner, understanding his fear of being with a woman for the first time. Regardless, he pulls Rabbit up, urging him to prove he's worthy of his trust. Bob leads Rabbit to the room where the terrified woman, Angie, is cooped up in the corner. The vicious man pulls her by the leg and suffocates her with his arms to stifle her screams and set the mood. As Angie quiets down, Bob grabs his knife to end her. However, he decides to leave it up to Rabbit, saying he'll kill her if he doesn't, and hands the timid man the weapon. When Bob exits the room, Rabbit drops the knife and slumps down. Angie realizes that the teenage man is harmless compared to her abductor, so she introduces herself and tries to get to know him better. Rabbit grabs the knife as the woman approaches him, but she urges him to fight the deranged man. Since Rabbit is mentally resigned to his captor, he claims they can't escape, so Angie offers her body instead. However, the distressed teenager refuses, thinking that copulation involves killing. Learning that Rabbit hasn't done both, Angie leads him on while crying in the hands of her merciful killer. Suddenly, an impatient Bob barges inside the room, compelling Rabbit to stab Angie, and he screams at his captor to leave them be. Shortly after, Rabbit drags Angie's body next door while Bob sleeps. Covered in blood and dirt, Rabbit faces his captor, saying he wants to hunt. Realizing that his self-proclaimed son has successfully awakened to a killer's life, Bob gives Rabbit some fresh clothes and purchases a brand new chair which he sits beside him. Afterward, Bob leads Rabbit into his cab, where the young man remembers his mother's voice the day they were abducted. Then, the killer's protege sits in the front passenger seat and tucks down until they drive into town. 
Along the streets, Bob suggests a couple of women whom Rabbit all declined, claiming they're not his type. Then, the deranged man realizes his son is overwhelmed by selecting his next victim, so he decides to return home and watch Rabbit's video record instead. Alarmed, the protege realizes that Bob has recorded his moment with Angie. He reasons that he doesn't want the professional killer to witness his inexperience, but Bob insists. Shortly, a police car patrolling the area passes by, so Rabbit ducks as the cab driver parks by the road. When the police pass by, Bob sees his car's reflection on a glass board, reading the word help written on the side, which his protege wrote earlier. Furious about Rabbit's betrayal, Bob hits him and scrubs off the mark on his cab. On the way home, the deranged man realizes that Rabbit had purposely stabbed Angie, convincing their captor that he had killed her. However, Rabbit avoided her vitals and persuaded the woman to pretend to be dead. Then, he hid her in the next room and gave her a flashlight, water, and a cutter knife to protect herself. Back at the garage, Bob punches his protege unconscious and heads inside the house, calling for Angie. When Rabbit regains consciousness, he hurriedly pounds at the locked door and breaks it open with a crowbar. Concurrently, Bob crawls to Angie's hideout with a knife, but the woman suddenly points the flashlight at him and slashes his heel. Pained and enraged, Bob attacks his captive when Rabbit arrives. Seeing Angie unmoving, Rabbit strangles his captor and thrusts the knife at him without thinking twice, ending the serial killer's life. Then, the wounded woman faintly calls Rabbit, who looks at her in relief. Afterward, Angie recovers in the house while the longtime prisoner reads through the letters addressed to Bob, whom he buried with the killer's victims. Some time later, Rabbit knocks on his father's house, where he finds Brad carrying a puppy. The distressed man claims he wanted a puppy before, but his parents couldn't afford it. Confused, Brad stares back at the stranger, whom he recognizes as his first son, Tim. Marie, Brad's new wife, warmly looks at her husband's long-lost child and invites him inside their house. Tim looks around at the extravagant home, remembering his family's substandard life before he got abducted with his mother. Brad asks where he's been, so Tim reveals his mother was killed, earning sympathy from Marie. Then, Tim hands his father a letter, which he claims Brad has given his brother Bob. However, Marie claims her husband doesn't have a brother, but the tearful man ignores her, dumping his frustration at the apathetic man. Suddenly, a boy, Colin, intervenes, but Brad impatiently orders him to retreat to his room. Tim recognizes his half-brother and repeats his father's words, in one ear and out the other, which he also heard Bob say. Then, Marie reads Brad's letter to his serial killer brother, which contains Sarah and Tim's younger picture and learns that her husband paid Bob to get rid of Brad's first wife and son. The tormented man threatens Brad, who challenges and pushes him to leave. Deterred by the truth, Marie stops her husband from beating Tim, so Brad chases his wife and pins her to the floor. Tim watches his father manhandle Marie the same way Bob beats his victims, so he grabs a glass ornament and hits him. When Brad struggles beneath his son, Tim hits him in the head, ending him instantly. Then, Marie thrashes her living room, telling Colin to remain in his room. She encourages her husband's tormented son to escape as she calls for the police, claiming someone broke into her house and killed Brad. Afterward, Tim returns to the isolated house, figuring out his way alone in a killer's abode, where he still feels bound through years of torment. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.